Hey, um, do you feel like having a bit of chat about what we went through yesterday, what we saw, what we experienced? Because you know, lovely Farno oh, ab- gave absolutely Look. gave us gave us a chance. That they, they they gave us. We we had to bring notes from our parents, but because of that, we got a <laughs> night off and we're able to go and do our thing. Let me just show you. Uh, I haven't got any. The the people actually the the group uh, that hosted us actually recorded the panel that we were on. And if we get the footage or if we get the audio, we might actually end up just putting it up as a podcast so you can kind of hear what we did. But this was uh, dinner time after it. You can have a look at the um, at the group of people there and also a little bit of the uh, kapahaka going on. It's pretty cool. I think I had a grin on my face this whole this yeah. whole performance. It was pretty amazing, actually, and it was so it was so welcoming. Uh, we should say a huge thanks to uh, Wadang and to Lisa as well for asking us to come down. You know, Chewy said it at the at the actual um, panel, but we talked about it before the the imposter syndrome that kind of came out. But um, it was it was it was really interesting to be able to talk to people. And I guess the reason we got asked down there, I guess, for want of a, a better explanation, is because of this, because we have conversations here uh, for, as a couple of like dumbass non Maori from Dunedin. But what hopefully what we're helping and trying to do as buffers is to get um, to get a message out there that some people are uptaking, and it's a little bit like. You know, you can always, there's all, it's like there's always someone smarter than you. There's always someone dumber than you as well. Like I used to joke with the kids uh, in schools when I was working in schools full of 10 year olds. I used to go to them. They'd go like, oh, yeah, mister, how do you know so much? And I went, well, technically, I only need to be as smart as an 11 year old to know more about stuff than you. <laughs> technically, because you're 10. And it's a bit like that. We can all bring someone along. You know, we can all move someone closer to the enlightenment. And I think, I don't know, I haven't really had this conversation with the whanau who had us down there, but it feels like what we're doing here, one of the things we're doing here is bringing some people along. And we kind of went down to talk about how in our little kind of semi-medicated way, cheers, uh, we're bringing people along and then handing them off to people like Professor Margaret Mutu to actually get them over the line, because we're not going to do that, but to hand them off to someone else. Is that is that fair, Chewy, way of saying it? Yeah, like, uh, uh, first of all, I, I do want to comment on the imposter syndrome because <laughs> um, there, there was a couple of things that really brought that crashing home for me. It is very easy to sit in my room here with a monitor in front of me, uh, looking at Pat, looking at the chat, and, you know, looking at the numbers each week, and, 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 and it's an abstract thing. Uh, but when you go into... A room like that with that many people and uh and sit there and you're like oh wow you know you get the the welcome and 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 uh, you know i i, I think i commented to someone on that that's a, the only the third time i've ever been on a marae um so that was sitting there and then when they introduced the panel you know um I was catherine catherine de Alejante is one of them yeah decades <laughs> of <laughs> Being in Parliament and being part of the Green Party, talking about um, treaty issues and education, just an, an absolutely storied career. Um, and then, uh, you know, someone who's working with youth in prison and again, treaty issues and studying a PhD, cultural, studying a PhD. And then we've got Pat, award winning broadcaster, award winning podcast. And then, well, hang, on, hang on, you're an, um, hang on, you're an award winning podcaster as well. Come on, just be fair. <laughs> And and, and then, and Chewy, then who, well, you have to know you can't say. And then there's Chewy. Yeah, no, no, you can't say then Chewy. Then there's these two guys who make uh, immature jokes about our bald prime minister. That's kind of our. That's where we come that, into the fray. That, that is very true. But <laughs> um, uh, I, I mean, you you brought this up with um, a guest from from last night's pre-record, right? About the imposter syndrome. Yeah. And to have Zena warrior princess <laughs> tell us that imposter syndrome is something that everybody gets and you just push yeah, through you know what it. you do when xena tells you something you fucking listen you do it or you're in trouble um and, and, and it was very true with with a lot of those questions that like i i remember one of those questions it, it was was about the the history curriculum and the changes to it and that sort of thing and i i'm not a teacher 
you know, I can't speak to that. I've never set policy or anything like that. But all I could think of with that question is I was a kid that was really interested in history. So I spoke to that. And one of the things about having uh, having a live talk with that group of people in that setting is they're very vocal when you say something that resonates. And and when I was saying something like this, and I just had you know people going Yoda ripping through the crowd and stuff like that, and I was like, ah, excellent, because at the end of the day, when we talk about Maori issues on the show, we're two Pakeha guys. <laughs> And it's like, a, a lot of it is like, Jesus, I hope I'm on the right track here. I hope this is my place to say. And from all of the people that came up to us afterwards, it was exactly what we've talked about when we've talked about Buffer. You know, yeah. it's like, it, it, it's not just Māori pushing for these things. It's not just Māori that think that they're important. There are other people that think they're important as well. And... <sighs> And it'd be like seeing, like, just when reinforcements arrive, right at the at the big crucial in big battle of the movie, reinforcements arrive. That's that's what it must feel like. And yeah. I'm not saying that it, it's it's you know parking. I've got to be there to, for it to be successful. Or parking. I need to. We don't need to stand in the front. We don't need to stand in the back. We just need to stand shoulder to shoulder. And yeah. that's what these guys were 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 were, were working through. Um, I, I said to my wife Claire on the way back, like just going to that conference and and being there and and seeing the reaction, it's just really filled up my cup. Yeah, you know, yeah, I know a lot saying. of a, a lot of the stuff that we talk about uh, week in week out drains out my cup. It really does at times, and to see that group of people going right, what do we do? What's important to us? The kids are important. Cool. Let's yeah. let's focus in on that. It made me think. Um, I was talking to my partner about it. Like, is when I grow up, I want to be Maori, or when I come back, I want to come back Maori, or something. Just the the and I, I preaching to the choir. Got it. But this is a little revelation. I was trying to think, what do you have in a European society that can match that community? And about as close as I got was pardon the pun but i grew up in it is the catholic church where you're sort of the catholic church that i grew up in because there's a primary school attached to it and all the parents and those kids go to that and it's all kind of one group of people but it's still not the same there's nothing like it that the foundation of those people and that group that we were at last night the foundation of everything they are is tied up integrally into the community they're a part of and we were talking about it and we we're talking about oh this group does this for society and this group does this for society and they kind of bring everyone on board and it's like yeah but this group we're talking about last night they do this for themselves like they're that what why they're teaching their kids is because it's their kids they're not offering they are doing this as well but i'm talking about the community it's like i was thinking of the examples that we were thinking of and it's always doing something for someone else in the community and bringing them on board but they just felt something very different that you know through the, the their their oral history through their songs through their dance it's them telling the next generation about the previous generation and then it's them telling the next generation about the previous generation and the previous generation and it just it's just a really it was a real eye opener i mean i've been on marae lots of times but just in that moment where we were sitting there and be, because they were thanking us for coming and, oh, you went there at the very end, Shui, but it happened with us as well. Mm. Eating this amazing food and having oh, singing. Oh, I was there for the food. I was there for the <laughs> having food. singing from the front, but then also sporadically a bunch of, this was for the kids, and then a bunch of the parents would just stand, or adults was in it, and they'd sing as well. And all of a sudden you had this cacophony of sound all around you. And it's like it wasn't a performance by the kids for the adults. It was a performance by the kids with the rest of the community. It's like it just really felt like they weren't putting on something for others. They were continuing uh, this, their story for themselves. Now, I'm not also saying they don't supply for the community because they do, but they just really felt like the sense of. And then I think about like, I mean, I'm, I'm Irish and stuff, and, and maybe back in Ireland in the in the in the 1930s when people had to get together more, there was more community. But we're so disjointed in our communities, you know. And not to beat an old horse to death, but yeah, we put our old people in homes. You know, this this marae was building apartments for their kumatua to go to on the marae, and I think that, I think um, they said that that handed over two sets of keys yeah. to the first two 
the first two, um, you know, older generation people to live on the marae, to live in the community. They don't get sent off to the retirement village. That's what we do, you know. And it's just it was it was like I just went. I mean, you know, it's you never they say you never do. It's 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 too old. I'm too old now to make that in my family or my community because it's well, it's 800 years getting to that experience we had on on monday night it was just looking awesome and then they also gave us chill you've got something pretty cool but these really cool little thank yous this is dope as shit. and i said that i would put it straight away up on my bit in my set so it's going to go up here little thank you and a thank you back and it was just a lot of fun it was a lot of fun and uh anytime I'll be there any time oh, in a heartbeat. Um, I'm going to have to do a video of my one. Yep. Oh, yeah, for sure. My, don't, my, don't, 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 don't No, no. I'll, I'll show you later.